Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to episode number four of Just Another Retrocast with Mr. Paul Brown. Hello there. Mr. Ross Murphy. Hello. And me, Chris Quinton. This week in Just Another Retrocast, we are going to be discussing stuff from our childhood that's been changed for modern audiences and whether or not that's okay. Because sometimes it just isn't, is it? No. Sometimes it just is. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. So let's have a look at some lists. Did you not change the music for this week just to be in keeping with the... Um, I could use the Doctor Who theme tune. Oh no, oh no, I was just thinking, just change, just to annoy everybody at home, just get, get on the theme of changing things oh, dramatically, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just to annoy them. Good thought. Yeah. I, I wish I'd have thought of that before <laughs> I edited this <laughs> podcast, which I didn't. Hey, never mind. Oh, never mind. Well... I don't think I'll have time tomorrow to write a new, <laughs> new thing, <laughs> to be honest, or Wednesday. Oh, no, we like adding to your workload. It's yeah. great. Right. Yeah. How do you want to kick this off, guys? Well, um, the elephant in the room is it's going to be Doctor Who, Doctor it, straight Who. away. Yeah. And that'll kick starters off, won't it? Well, Fair enough. Yeah, but then you've also got street lights. Uh, light have bulbs in them now, but when when people were younger, they were it was just fire. I, well, I think befo- <laughs> before that, it was uh, they didn't catch those little glow worms. No, put actually, them yeah. in there. it's funny. I, I know I'm joking, but weirdly, my old boss, he's mm. only like 10 years older than me, but because he was born in the late 60s and I was born in the late 70s, like growing up in the 70s was hugely different from growing up into the 80s mm. because electri- electronics happened. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He, I remember he would tell me things like, you know, when they, you know, we've all done it. You walk, you're pissed off on the way home, like when you're a late teen, when you're a teenager or whenever, and there's roadworks. Yeah. And they've got the uh, the light, the orange lights to show you there's roadworks, and they're those ones with those fucking massive square batteries in. Yeah, yeah. And you just nick one, yeah. and then you just leave it at home, and it's just, just it, it's flashing for, it flashes for about a month, Ever. doesn't it? Yeah. Because those batteries are so ridiculously yeah, big. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. My old boss, he says... They used to be filled with paraffin and <laughs> lit. Wow. And that's, that's I just left. That's less than a, that's like a decade difference. Yeah. That's crazy, isn't it? But it is the ab- it is basically the advent of um Did they use scale electronics and the microchip. Being able to print circuit boards and then also scale down to onto silicon. So did they nick those ones and take them home? I don't know, but you'd nick that and it I no. You'd, you'd probably nick it and take it pa- no, camping, wouldn't you? Right, like we did with the battery powered ones, to be honest, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I would. Yeah, yeah. You could cook your bloody beans on it. I was just going to say, you, you cook your on the way home. Be cool. Keep your chips warm, wouldn't it? Yeah. Wrapped in newspaper. <laughs> wrapped in a paraffin lamp. See I, see, I miss that. Things like that, just chips wrapped in newspaper. Yeah, true. What about Doctor Who, though? See, Doctor Who's constantly changing and he evolving because that's part of his character. He yep. is. Um, ooh, there, there's everything changing. Um, but you, but me, it's just the color of my carpet changing. It's fine. <laughs> Paul right, looks down, panic. It's empty. <laughs> this coat can's empty. It's fine. Don't worry. It's a slightly darker stain. <laughs> uh, yeah, Doctor Who. Um, see, he was changing right in the sixties anyway, because orig- initially, this I was having a conversation with a new nerd about Doctor Who. And he's a bit of an aficionado about Doctor Who. And he, I said to him, I quite enjoyed, I couldn't get into Doctor Who at the time, but I said, I quite enjoyed the Peter Cushing rendition. And he went, no, it's not Doctor Who. I said, but it's a Doctor Who in the title. And he's got a TARDIS and he's a, he's travelling through time. No, it's not Doctor Who, it's this different thing. It's totally separate, not allowed. So I was quite surprised. And even that now um Strikes a, a real nerve. Who is this nerd? So I'm going to punch him in the face. Oh, I, I, we'll, we'll track him down. I'll, we'll give him a smack. No, later. just give me his phone number. Yeah, all right, all right. and I'll Stop. punch him down the phone like in Danger Five. Yeah, yeah. So he's right. saying like the just changes that are made to the character in modern age. It, were, it, well, were bad no, enough. when he when he first started off, there was there was a there was a series of films, and Peter Cushing starred as the Doctor. Yep. 
Um, the... But he's not recognised as a doctor. He's seen as a completely different continuity altogether. I, is that including mm. the really cool one where the Daleks take over London? Yeah, yep. Daleks they, Invasion of Earth. That's fucking brilliant. It is. It's, it's got is, those it's great. scary gas mask dudes yep. where they've sort of like half Daleks like them inside. Yep. That's brilliant. That's yeah. very good. And no, that's it's not proper Doctor Who. It's not seen as, even though it's Doctor Who and the Daleks. Wait, it's not canon. Yeah. No. Is it's that not, it's Peter not Cushing? It's Peter Cushing. Is it? Mm. Wow. I do love that movie. Yeah, There's another one as well, isn't there? Yeah. Uh, and the one where he goes to the Garlic, Daleks' home world, and it's like the birth of the Daleks as well. I think the, so. The, I think da- that's a movie as well. Is that well. the Dalek farm? <laughs> <laughs> no, because they're I'll, not I'll all... Um, joke with her. <laughs> I'll have a white joke for you there. <laughs> it's quite sad, isn't it, the Dalek backstory? What, because they can't go up and down stairs? No, it's like they just were fighting for so long that they basically had to make themselves into tanks to ah, survive because yeah. their world is so fucked up. But I think that's another one of those feature length movies, but they're both really good because they're mm. creepy as fuck. I tell you what, the Dalek invasion of Earth is not Peter Cushing. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm very sure. So there's a, w- there's a doctor before that. So it's an even older one. Peter Cushing's in a colour movie where, yes. they, where they end up on the planet of the Daleks. Nice. So there's a London. Yeah, there's definitely the London I- invasion one. I'm sure it's, colour it's called Invasion well. of Earth. Oh, fuck, In- here we Invasion go. of yeah, Earth. Dalek's now. Invasion of Earth is a black and white one. Is it? Yeah. Dalek's Invasion of Earth, 2150. Oh, it is Peter Cushing as there Doctor Who. There you go. Who. See? And is it colour? It's got some wicked music as well. Oh, my God, it is colour. And S- I'm sure that's the one that's got the, like, the heavy, when I say heavy, like the heavy Dalek with the yeah. bigger barrel. Yeah. I think so, yeah. But anyway, how does that make you feel, Chris? Now, now it's completely different how you remember. That's what the fact that they've changed the doctor to a woman. No, I mean just that. Oh, just, just that. Just realizing that that that's not right. No, that's cool. I don't mind that. That's you know. Yeah, but what if you're a Doctor Who fanatic and it's just a false memory? Yeah, well, it could be the Mandela um, effect. <laughs> um, I'm quite glad that I'm fallible. <laughs> In honesty, no, I would. I, 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 I totally get that. That's fine. It's just I just thought with the whole theme of this this week, just thought we'd um, <laughs> don't like change. I don't like it. It's different. It's in my brain. I'm only going to watch it in my head. I could close my eyes, uh, fingers in my ears, and watch the movie from inside my head. Okay. What about other stuff that they've kind of screwed with over the years? Well, um, uh, going backwards in in. Emmerdale, Emmerdale, they audio. changed the intro to Emmerdale, didn't yeah, they? they? That did. caused massive controversy, didn't it? I think probably the intro to Thomas the Tank Engine caused more controversy. Do you know, have they changed? I just, I really. Do you know what annoyed me? Growing up, when they changed the introduction to Grain Jill, mate. Oh, Joe, it wasn't the same once they took away that sausage cartoon. I don't. I quite like the weird, that. that kind of. It's Once they got the badge, and that was a Blue Peter competition, wasn't it? The redesign of the badge, I'm sure it was. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then was. they changed the music. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. What about when they changed from Andy Peters into that other guy um. in the broom cupboard? Oh, no, it was from it was from Schofield. Philip Schofield, wasn't it, to Andy Peters? Or was it the other way around? See, that was... that was um, Mandela effect. No, no, I no. They both work with animals now, but they don't, do they? I uh, No, I think... Philip Schofield, Philip yeah, Schofield he, he and works. Karen Lineker is slowly becoming the same person as well. Yeah, I think isn't isn't um, Philip Schofield on this morning? So technically, yeah, he does work with animals. And um, from what I hear, Andy Peters just is an animal. Um, yeah, yeah he's is a bit rapey, isn't, isn't he? Very good radio, is it? No, we're going somewhere else, aren't we? But hey, yeah, we're talking about Doctor Who. They keep changing that, but it's fine because that's literally part of the character. Yeah. Apart from Peter Cushing, who doesn't count because he was just in two film versions of two TV episodes. Oh, God, yeah. So what else do we remember from childhood that's been revisited recently? Just because Adam's not here, bloody Ghostbusters. Should we talk about Ghostbusters 2016? Yeah. Have you guys both seen it? Oh, you haven't, have you? I haven't. I can't bring myself... I've seen the trailer and that was enough for me. I feel the trailer summed it up. And it wasn't that it... See, it's I'm on the fence where it's not. It's just not for me. It's I like the f- I like that it's being reinvented, and I like the things that are revisited and reinvented. But I don't have to like them as such. I like no. the, I like that it's being revisited, but is it going to be for me? No, because I'm f- of a different time. 
I could have forgiven it a lot more if it were not a do- uh, not a Ghostbusters movie. Yeah. I think if it were just a completely different, separate thing, mm. it didn't have to be Ghostbusters. I'm not having a problem. I didn't, well, uh, initially, I'll admit, I had a bit of an issue with them changing the gender of the characters, mainly because the target audience, again, is me. If they were reinventing it no, for a younger... No, the target g- audience isn't you. Well, it kind of is. There's seven billion people live on this planet. Uh, that's the target audience. Yeah, but we are... You know, Ghostbusters was great because it was uh, pretty much a, a kid's movie. It was safe for children, yeah, right? Saying Ghostbusters is your Ghostbusters target audience also says that Transformers is your target audience. Yeah, it but is. But you're it never going to watch that film. I am Transformers target audience. And so are you. No. Because well, we're the right I'm age. fucking middle-aged man. Well, really. it's... it's, it's it's we're the audience and our kids are the main focus. That's what they're not after. Not with Transformers. No, it's true. That's well, mm, there's too yeah. much swearing in it, mate. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I wouldn't take my 15 year old kid to see it. I don't think it's just. It's a 12, though, isn't it? Well, still, there's some of the humour in it's just fucking crass, well, isn't it? Yeah, it's but horrible. that's that's more the director, isn't yeah, it? Rather than I think the Michael intention Bay. behind it was to yeah spark that same drive, that same for it that there was there in the 80s and they made a killing with merchandise i mean yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. that's I, th- I think that's what a lot of this revisiting is about yep. let's take a brand that was incredibly popular and reinvent it for the modern culture very true and that's why we're not going to connect to it because it's for modern he's moving with the times but uh, everybody knows when you get to a certain age certain parts of you just stay there don't they with with yep. yeah. yeah 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 i don't true. mean physically yeah these bits that just stay there but hey what i was trying to say about target audiences is that when the f- first ghostbusters movies were released they were aimed at kids of my age it was like star wars aimed for 12 year aimed at 12 year olds you know it's their kids movies with a slight adult edge yeah whereas the new ghostbusters movie the stars that are that are in it and the humor that's in it it's okay and quite acceptable if you've been watching things like saturday night live yeah and things on the run up to it and you recognize the humor of some of the the actors that are in it yeah uh i got on with some of the humor that other people i know didn't like um i know adam for instance didn't like it Mm. um specifically from the female egon character the scientific one of the group her she's a saturday night live actor yeah um Comedy actress. They're all excess now, aren't they? Or they were oh, are they? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they are. Is it terrible because we're used to a different pattern of story? We're used to a different. We, we, do you know what I mean? Uh, is modern culture looking for a different pace? We're a bit more demanding of our movies. Well, not to sound too much of an old man, but we like a bit of story and a bit of uh, class with our with our uh, media. Yeah, um, yeah well, true. I just. People like M- Bill Murray and people like um, God, what's his name? <laughs> Dan Aykroyd. Dan Aykroyd. There was an element of slapstick to a point, but it was still quite a dry, clever humour. Really, yeah. it was. It was, yeah, and it wasn't all for the quick big gag. Loads of stuff for the children to enjoy. Slimer, yeah. for instance. Stay puff, mar- stay puff, marshmallow man. Yep. But loads of adult jokes and stuff yeah, in yeah. there. And it was that you'd only get if you were an adult. Yeah. And it w- they weren't driving for that big laugh constantly. Um, but that was a different pace. I mean, in the eighties, it was a slower pace. Yeah. The world was a, a different pace completely. The point I was trying to make actually about that, the, the, when they've bought it back around and remade it, mm. the problem is if you're gonna retarget at the same age uh, at the same people that you were targeting in the first place with the first movie so those people have grown up now and that you know th- the the ghostbusters remake is i think i'm right in saying a fairly adult movie i don't mm. think it was particularly child friendly um so you are pointing at the same people and they and then at that point change is an issue maybe mm. because if you're reinventing stuff for a new audience, I think that's more acceptable. See what I mean? Yeah, but this the the way I'm seeing it is they still want to keep us on board. That's what they're, they're trying to many. They're, they're trying to get everybody on board. Yeah. The, the, the more buttons they press for the more amount, the bigger amount of people, the more money they're going to make. 
That's yep. what it's about. And that, I think there's a lot of that at the moment. There's, there's, especially with reinventing things and bringing things back, they're trying to hit that buzz factor for everyone. They're trying yeah. too hard to hit that nostalgia hit, that new hit, to keep something fresh, but at the same time nostalgic and to just try and drag everybody into it. And by doing that, it's more it's more a focus on the gimmick of the idea of the, of the story that the gimmick of that rather than Ghostbusters was a, f- a fun film and it was a fun concept and they ran with that for the first film and after that they thought okay maybe there's room for you know a, a sequel maybe uh, maybe we got some merchandise <laughs> Bow before the might of Vigo. See, they'd, oh, set, <laughs> Vigo. they'd set a tone there. And it was, whereas now it's like, that was really good back then. That really worked. Let's do that all over again. But we need to hit every, and it's more looking at the gimmick. Okay, let's have a look at why that was popular. Not really. It was, it became popular because it was, it was well written. It was a good comedy. Yeah. It was a good, well-paced comedy. And I think a lot of that is missed. They missed the point. Yeah, a lot of that does happen quite a lot with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It's mm. happened with well, yeah, Transformers. Shit, that's bad, isn't it? Well, again, uh, they're not as bad as Transformers. Again, the, the it's, con- a ki- it's a kids' movie. A kids' movie, and the first one wasn't great neither. But again, if you take it straight back to where the comics where it was original, yeah. Yeah, it was. A, it was a good, well-paced original. At least idea. with the the new Turtles movies, they aren't. Necessarily, as bad as Transformers. no, they're not as bad as Transformers, no way, no. and they're not trying really to get like older Turtles fans. They're, they're kids' movies out and out. Mm. You know, they're they're slapstick. They're you know, child. They are child friendly. There's no swearing in them. They're yeah. just you know. Why the have they not made a mask movie? Is it because everything those helmets does are available on a smartphone? It's no. pretty <laughs> much. I think uh, it's pretty much. The technology looks a bit shite now. <laughs> yeah, you've got Transformers. And G.I. Joe crossover coming up. They're going to hit it there, aren't they? Is that actually happening? Yeah, apparently so. I think in actual fact... With Microman as well. I think you're going to find it's um, Mask as well. Is it Mask as well? Because I've heard Micronauts are involved in that as well. Yeah, 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 true. So Micronauts, They're just throwing everything at it. What, Mask Crusaders? Will they be in a movie fighting crime? Working... It'll be overtime, mate. If it's it's two and a half hours, mate, they're going to be working well fucking overtime. Wow. They'll be in a a three and a half hour extended... Adult cut, You'll see the they? credits roll up, and at the end they'll still be going. Do you think Matt Tracker will be in it with Spectrum? He's got to be, and it's supervision. So, oh yeah, it'll it'll be it'll cool. be three D, four D, five D. What I quite like about Mask is it's basically like a shit Thunderbirds. Yeah. Oh no, it's a good Thunderbirds. Thunderbirds I was shit. Yeah, I that's don't know something they really screwed with, isn't it? See, that's yeah. another one. Yeah. See, what's wrong with puppets? Why do you have to animate it? Cost. Yeah, cost, is, cost. Well, this is true, I suppose. However, Jim Henson's dead as well. No. Was it? It wasn't him. No, it wasn't Jim. No, no, but Jim Henson um, does all puppets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's no longer, yeah, holding a candle for puppetry. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. So. The Muppets came back, and I've never seen it. You should watch the new Muppets, I've actually. It's really good. It's very good. My girlfriend hates it. I was like, oh, Muppets is coming back. She's like, I fucking hate them. Why? Because it's very different. Oh, because she just hates the originals. Yeah. So that's something they haven't messed with, I'm guessing, too much. But it's it's still the same sort of format. The yeah. format is different, actually. Is it? It's more kind of like a behind the scenes. The new season is more like a behind the scenes and the emotional conflict between the Muppets yeah. as actors. Well, I know. I think, I think the, the original background. Muppets is like that and you just don't remember it. Yeah, true. It is actually. about... Yeah. It I know is what a you show mean about you producing a show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I remember the behind the curtains conversations. Yeah, and yeah. That's but now it's more kind of like the shaky cam, like in high it's quality behind the. Yeah, it's 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 like it's basically good. the office, isn't it? But with I was just going to say, yeah, it sounds yeah. very much that angle. But again, that's where they've taken something and changed it to a, and adapted it to take a theme that's become really popular in modern day culture. But that makes and it had feel to throw that at it. That makes it feel satirical, and therefore it makes it acceptable and clever. Mm. You know, and not just screwing around with something that somebody loves. So sometimes it can really work. Yeah. As we mentioned earlier. Yeah. Absolutely. Star Wars is better and worse in equal measure. Yeah. True. It's horrible how it makes me feel. It's confusing, isn't it? It's yeah. Yeah, but at least you've got some good. And you look at me with Transformers. There's no Yeah, no, that's what that just makes you feel thing. really dirty. Like episode seven was fucking brilliant. Like it, episode seven yeah. was immediately better than anything that trans anything to do with Transformers. But that's be- what episode seven. You mean um, Star Wars? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's because they've 
they've gone back. Not li- I mean, literally they have with the, the original actors, but they'd also uh, concept wise and writing yeah, style wise. Well, yeah, and then they got people the who were absolutely in love with uh, yeah the Star Wars as opposed to in love with explosions mm. and bums. I still yeah. preferred Rogue One. No, you just you're just you're just actually wrong. You are entitled <laughs> to your own opinion, but it is just wrong. But I have a you know a good argument for it. No, you don't. Yes, I do. Um, it's the same thing as as I was saying about target audiences with Ghostbusters. Is that Episode Seven is still a movie for twelve year olds, and what I want from a Star Wars film is something that appeals to me. As an adult. No, I just want more Star Wars. See, I that's okay. If you can just let go and just enjoy a kid's movie, then it's great. But I struggled with that when I saw it at the cinema the first time. I appreciated it a bit more when I sat down and tried to rewatch it at home. Um, but I still preferred Rogue One because it spoke to me as the Star Wars fan who had grown up. Yeah, I just thought it was fan service more Rogue One. It was just so much unnecessariness in it. Yeah, it's all but unnecessary, then, like, isn't it? But episode eight is probably going to be good, but then Han Solo is probably not. So it's in trouble. It's in so much trouble, but we'll see. But going back on topic, yeah. So you watch Ghostbusters? Yes. Yeah, that was part of our topic, mate. Yeah, but well, all, all I mean was the main <laughs> the main focus was how did you feel? Afterwards, did you feel your childhood had been ruined? No, um, I felt as if it's just a wasted opportunity. Yeah. So it, I wasn't so sort of pissed off that I felt like that there was two hours of my life I couldn't get back. But I did think that there aren't millions of children that are going to be running out and buying action figures. No. And they're not going to be able to reignite that. No. It's just not going to happen. So it's more of a... It's sad that that can't happen for this generation. Yeah. Rather, yeah, and that's 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 that's, that's what I've that's my angle on it as well. It's just, yeah, it'd be nice to see that with somebody else. But so not ruining my childhood. I don't mind that they've changed it mm. and changed the gender of the characters and stuff, but they aren't going to be as successful. And maybe that's just, maybe that's more of a killer. Because your beloved things from your childhood should be successful now if they're revamped. They should be, but at the same time, the original, it doesn't take anything away from the original. The original was that little bit of magic there. It still always is yeah, and yeah. always will be. Absolutely. For that generation. Yeah. And it's like I say this, don't know about George Lucas, people going, oh, do you know what I mean? George Lucas ruined Star Wars. He didn't. He fucking made Star Wars. Yeah, that's, that's, that's all that matters. Yeah, it doesn't matter what he did with the prequels. He made Star Wars. Star Wars yeah. exists because of him now yeah. and nobody else. And I will say one thing for George Lucas. At least he's done some really good things with his money. As in, he's set up charities. He gives so much of his cash away to people that really need it. He's building that most expensive gifted... Uh, museum in the world isn't it right okay as well he's building a film museum in la and it's the uh it's the, the most expensive building built by philanthropy no, i haven't right. seen any free my letterbox it's costing like 100 million dollars just to build it and he's gonna have there's gonna be loads of star wars shit in there obviously but right. it's gonna be about movies pure so stuff that he's collected or um or is it other people's he's got a big collection he's probably bought a load of um his Carrie Fisher's mum's collection as well. That all got auctioned, didn't it? See, she could never get the funds up together to right. do that. I see. Like she had, like she owned literally every she. She owned that dress, that Marilyn Monroe dress. She owned Dorothy's dress. She owned multiple um, ruby slippers. Literally, she had all of the film props that you would think would be valuable and right. then she had to sell them because she could never get never get anybody on board to open a museum right. in hollywood i see that's, that's sad crazy isn't it, isn't it? yeah really that's sad but yeah all right okay other things then um the hasbro universe mm. i i i think i'm in for that as long as no just not no i, I with if this is for me again i mean Personally, I, I hope it does do well, and um, I hope the people that do love the Transformers uh, series enjoy it and it carries on. But we have me, shed Michael Bay at this stage. 
hopefully uh, no, for good. They've said this for the, about the last three one uh, three, no. and he's oh, he's always come back on board. This is the one where he's actually said that that's it. Like I, I don't think he's ever said that before. I think he'll still be funding it, and he'll still have a say in which direction it goes. Wonder if he owns the movie rights at some point it's quite or another. Possible, um, but but it just sounds like a massive clusterfuck to have mask meets. G.I. Joe meets Micronauts meets Transformers all in the same film. There's enough of a cluster for just Micronauts? Transformers. Micronauts was um it was a line that was brought over here and they were like little transparent trans uh, little clear robot men, but not if it, they were about the same size as a Star Wars figure. Um was it not and a comic book originally? Yeah, there was a comic book over anything, but originally they were part of the Microman series over in Japan, and they ran from l- early 70s straight through into the early 80s. Right. And they were part of... They, they are what became the Transformers line, eventually. Right, I see. Um, they, they were little action men that eventually... They had little gimmicks, and those gimmicks, little vehicles that would transform, would turn into robots eventually and then the little men were discarded and it just was just so going by the gi joe movies not that i've seen them yeah i don't think they were very good i they hear they were well. better than the transformers but they were they weren't great right okay yeah but going by the concepts that i've seen in the trailers it would make sense that mask it would make sense GI yeah, Joe and totally Micronauts, agree. by the sounds of it were in the same universe yeah i i get that but i just don't see how I mean, if they can't execute one timeline uh, one continuity yeah true c- well then it's not gonna ju- i mean uh, putting aside the fact that uh, all right maybe i'm a bit of a stickler and the new transformers aren't for me but putting that aside i've they're still slated yeah the films and the and the toy lines they're, they're still heavily uh, criticized massively and they've lost that charm for me that the, the, the old ones do have. But I don't know if that's my childhood attachment to it or if it's just that it's just not that good. Fair enough. So, I mean, there aren't really then, if you think about it, there aren't that many properties from our childhood so far that have been really well handled, are there? Not, not so Star far. Star Wars aside, I suppose. Ah, Voltron. But, oh, Have Voltron's very Voltron's good. Voltron's very it? good. Oh, sorry. Ah. Yeah, the new Voltron series. Legendary Defender. Yeah, I've I've watched that. I gave that a go, and yeah, I'm looking forward to They're season three. They're knocking those out really quickly, yeah. aren't they? Yeah, They're starting on season three very season soon. Season three's coming out soon. Yeah, and it's um, yeah, it's good. I've not even finished watching season two yet. In fact, I go as far as to say it's a lot better than the original series from the eighties. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Wasn't the original Voltron thrown together from old animation cells? From didn't somebody from the West purchase it as like a, you know, something else? Possibly and, and, no, re- um, and recut it, or am I thinking of Power Rangers? I'm thinking of Power Rangers. Power, Power Rangers. Rangers, the fight scenes, yeah, the fight scenes are from a totally different show, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. Or so the fight scenes and, and the big monster scenes and stuff as well. Yeah, that, that's yeah. Sorry, what I meant is they're from an old Japanese show that's been re-edited. Yeah, and they just um, stuck in the high school. They just bits. make a high school American thing. Yeah. yeah. Did um, you see the movie yet? No, what the Power well, Rangers? I, I fucking hate Power Rangers. Really? Okay. Yeah, I've literally st- got no interest in Power Rangers. I started watching it. I'm about halfway through it. I'm, uh, you know, I'm not really paying it a great deal of attention. I've just had it on while I've been cooking or washing up and stuff, and it's okay. It's yeah. just like a, like an average, like teenage-ish, like aimed at teenagers kind of superhero movie. It's, yeah, yeah. A bit like Spider Man. It's just, well, yeah, I suppose it's painting by numbers though. Yeah. In reality, yeah. Uh, old what's his face from Breaking Bad is uh what's his name brian cranston yeah he's uh the the main protagonist you know, face in the wall dude oh yeah him really tells him what to do <laughs> which is interesting because <laughs> he used to do some of the voice parts for the bad guys in the in the original show really i didn't know yeah, that yeah it's one of the first acting jobs that he had apparently wow there you i go. didn't know Fact that for the day um but yeah it's all right it it certainly looks good it it you know it's bang up to date power rangers movie and it, they're gonna do a sequel because their um, toy sales and everything have been really, really good. Yeah, they'd spoken about calling it off because it didn't do well at the cinemas, but it did really well in China and they've sold shitloads of merchandise. The merchandise, China. Will, yeah. Power Rangers will always do really well, it, merchandise-wise. Yeah, I mean, kids just love it, don't they? It outsells it. Transformers massively. Right. Yeah, but I suppose it doesn't matter because because <coughs> they've always been in. 
they've always been in, haven't they? Power Rangers. Since Power Rangers always. It came from. Uh, it was from Japan originally. Yeah. It was a late seventies concept. It was Super Sentai, yeah. and there's been many sort of evolutions of them. Yeah. So it wasn't the Mighty Morphin originally. So you those had all figures sorts of have been like in kids' minds. Oh God, yeah. Since way back in like seventies. Th- well, over here, perhaps the eighties. Over here, the, it was the it was eighty eight. Was eighty nine? Was it? oh no, it was nineteen ninety. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, but there's always been a toy line continuously, yeah, ever since, yeah. And now you see a Power Rangers toy on the shelf, yeah. Your kid's still going to want it because they yep. recognize it as a Power Ranger, and it doesn't matter that it's movie merchandise. The kids are going to buy the toy, it's a successful, see, you know. That's Power Rangers is quite an interesting one because those each time there's a new season, it's a different team completely, right. It's never the same act. I think some of the actors from previous teams will come and make a little cameo appearance and team yeah, yeah. up and all this business. But it's almost like the Doctor Who thing. It's co- they're constantly um, regenerating to a pole, yeah. evolving. Um, and I've never heard of any sort of kicking off about that ever. I don't. It, Power Rangers always just embraced. It's just that's that's what it is, and it constantly evolves. It constantly changes. And um, it's always done really well, apart maybe apart from this current yeah, movie yeah, line. Movie. But again, that's uh, from what I've seen of the trailers of that, it's quite a, th- it's it's very Americanized. Yeah, and I think you need that Japanese look and concept for. for I'd it say, to work to in honesty, if you were like an eighteen-year-old and you wanted to go to the movies, have a good time, not worry about. Yeah, you know, just leave your brain at the door and enjoy yeah. a movie. It's fine. Yeah. You can't pull it apart too much because it's just, no. yeah. So have we got any things from our childhood that we would like to see attempted or things we just don't want touched? Visionaries. You'd like to see... Well, like Knights of the Magical Light. I'd love yeah. to see that. You'd like to see them what? Touched? Yeah. Yeah. I'd love to touch a vision. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'd, I'd like to... I think that could work. That could be, you know, just a like a, a story of knights and wizards. See, I'm amazed it hasn't come up already, to be honest with you, with the, I mean, what, Game of Thrones, and you've got, uh, I mean, it is Game of they're Thrones. They're basically Patronuses from Harry Potter, aren't they, at this point? Yeah, it's, it's, well, it's that as well, and it, but it's the whole kind of magic, ancient times, high tech, all yeah. mashed in together. It would work brilliantly. Maybe they're knights and wizards to yeah. combined, aren't they? Maybe with the whole steampunk steampunk yeah, movie well, it's era. Bit of that. It's going to happen. No, it's, it's not. My prediction, steampunk movie era. It's going to happen. No. Didn't they try that? Though? I mentioned it last week, didn't I? What's that? That Will Smith movie, The Wild oh Wild yeah. West. <laughs> well, Wicked Wicked Wild Wild me. West. That's didn't that, cu- that thing that killed steampunk that is for not quite steampunk. some time? Oh, yeah, I suppose. It, yeah, there's yeah. quite a lot of steampunk in there. Yeah. Anyway. Um, things that were good and then they stopped being good. Uh, d- back to Transformers. Transformers animations are really good sometimes, and then they get to a point where they go, oh, it's d- we need some more toys, so they just reboot it, and, it and then it's not good anymore. And they cut it off before it's even finished. I'm talking about the Transformers animated series that came out about five years ago. Mm. Was there another animated series five oh, there's years always ago? That there's constant. Oh, oh yes, I saw that. It was really heavily computer animated, though, right? That one. It was... It was really, oh, it was hated by no, the no, fans. Do you know that actually caused a massive uproar, didn't it? I loved that one. Tran- yeah, but Transformer fans absolutely hated the concept because it was such a, f- it was so far removed from what we'd had previously. But the writing in it and the storytelling was really well done. This is the one where we mentioned it before, where um, Starscream gets all of his personalities split out, and mm. one of them's ah. just uh, him in out of the closet. <laughs> Yeah, right, it's okay. just fantastic. That was about but it. it's got really good art style, and some of the toys were really good because they had really clean lines. It wasn't CGI though; oh, okay. it was animated in that style, very similar to Thundercats came about. or something. Yeah, yeah. The art style reminded me of what was it? Batman the Brave and the Bold. Don't know, mate. I don't watch a lot of animation. I know Batman the Brave yeah, and the Bold. That's the more comedic one, right? I think s- no, it was the darker one. Do you just mean Batman? The animated be. series. Oh, it could be. oh yeah, well, the one yeah. that introduced Harley Quinn. Yes, yeah. that's the one. Yeah, Batman the animated. Series. Yeah, Brave and the Bold, sort of uh, Batman and Robin. Yeah, I remember the one you mean. No, uh, yeah, really no, bright, it's garish. No, it's it, well, it's, it's got a lot of that. It's bright and garish, but it's that sort of sleek lines. Right. Yeah. But uh, where were we? Yeah, that. Um, so visionaries, we'd like to see. Um, what Do you know I? what? 
in it about time GoBots got a, got a second go. Do you know? I'd I'd love to see that, but so it's been absorbed now by the Transformers story continuity. But you can have stuff in competition. We've got Marvel and DC. We can have Transformers and GoBots. Hasbro own it, I think. How do they? The whole concept, yeah. Ah. I think they bought the rights to GoBots. Oh wow! And then okay. they sort of just dissolved it. So GoBots, that's the one with uh, Leader uh, One. Leader One is Psycho. like a. Uh, F1 is he an F1 fighter F1 no. fighter yeah uh, and Cykel a motorcycle yeah the the really the inventive guys. name so he's he's got um, a henchman called Tank that turns into a goldfish bowl yes you, I, I'm amazed at he's quick there's isn't he there's a scooter isn't there there's, there's a moped there's a scooter called um, scooter s- oh is it is it is he called scooter yeah he's called scooter yeah is he and a he's moped spuck- but the thing is, he does that stupid thing where his face appears while he's still in his robot mode, doesn't he? Yeah, he pops oh. it up every now and again. Yeah, so he is bad. a moped, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. I remember yeah. him. Okay, yeah. yeah. I've yeah. just had a yeah, flashback. Wow. Well. Yeah. And then you've got Coptor. Coptor. Who is oh, yeah. a... Police car? Mm, not quite. <laughs> I remember. Elephant. Yeah. 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 He's a helicopter. Yeah, yeah I remember him. I had some GoBot toys, actually. And I remember doing some drawings of, of GoBots when I was a kid. Which I could probably find out for you guys next time, actually. Are GoBots the same as Transformers? And before they were Transformers and GoBots, did they have little men inside? They didn't, they didn't. Because it was, again, it was a, a mash of two sort of lines by Bandai. But um, some had little men in, some didn't. Um, so generally, it was the super... GoBots g- weren't Diaclone? No, no. GoBots were um, the Machine Robo series. From ah, Machine Robo. Yeah. Machine Robo. To Diaclone. Yeah. Is that a little bit racist or is it just an impressionist just voice just or an old nation's voice? No, not pointing fingers or anything. No. Just talking about robots. Yep. So, um, In Japan. But I'd love to see them <laughs> get another bit of... Yeah, they, I know they've, they get they get a nod every now and again. They've made an appearance in comics and stuff, but always in a really bad light. So Psykill turned up in one comic. He was in a gladiator's pit with Megatron. He just absolutely got the shit kicked out of him. Right, okay. And then you see other ones sort of dicking about in the background, sort of like, you know, little wavy cameos. So, so they are in well. an actual combined, like, shared universe. Yeah, though. they are now, yeah. But again, they only, they're only in the background. Lords? You just can't see them because they're rocks. They're just rocks. They're mate. in every frame of the comic, but they're just They're sort rocks. of the Transformers universe pervert. They just sort of hover around, peering around. Was and there not a universe? crossover cartoon of GoBots and yep. Rocklords? Yep, there is. Okay, I remember yep. that. Um, I remember that being all right, actually, when I was a kid. It's pretty bad. It's probably because I was a kid, though. Yeah, it? it's it's got that typical Hanna-Barbera pace. It's right. it, it's sort of the same sort of pace repeated every five oh. minutes. So it's peril, it's escape from the peril, it's relax for a minute, then it's peril, then escape, and then it's okay, over and over and over there's again. There's something I think perhaps somebody should look at, even if it's for an animated series, the Herculoids. Herculoids. Hanna Barbera. Yes, I rem- with, I've got with two like big blobby things. Yes, and uh, a triceratops that could fire lasers from its. Oh, uh, how it's bollocks! What? What are the dinosaur riding people? Dino, Dino riders. riders. Dino yeah. riders. Is that what they were called? That yeah. would be cool, actually. Yeah. Zoids as well. Zoids. See, I've <laughs> give me a live action Zoids, mate. That'd see, I'd love great. to see that, but I don't see it would be much different from. Um, t- uh, they'd have to. Put it in the same sort of continuity as oh, was it Robotech? called? Robotech, <laughs> not Robotech. See, Robotech was was it? Ro- oh, Robo Jocks and whatever. That was dreadful, wasn't it? Was that the, that was a cartoon, right? Robo Jocks. Robo. There was Robotech. Was a, I think a cartoon and a toy line, and then there was Robo Jocks, which was just a really bad eighties film. Um, right. So what's the one I'm thinking of then? I'm thinking where that recent one, the Rift. Is it? What's it? The Rift. It was like oh. They, they fight the casual. Oh right. Um, See, I think the Zod. If they did a Zoids, it was going to go that way. Pacific Rim. Pacific Rim. That's the one. That's great. I love Pacific Rim. See, I haven't, I haven't given it a go yet because I thought, oh, it's Kaiju and a Machinda, but Americanized. So you should it's g- gonna be give fucked. it a go. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Yeah. I'll give it. A I go. really enjoyed it. Um, so what's the one I'm thinking of then? Like Zoids, where mm. I don't know if you know the backstory for Zoids, but it's a single race of beings that land on a planet somewhere. Right. And one of them ends up on one side of the planet, the yep. other one ends up on the other. 
one starts to paint itself silver, the other one starts to paint itself gold. They build machinery and stuff, and hey presto, you've got a war. Right. Um, there's a very similar thing where the humans that crash land on a planet kind of like get ingested into the machinery. So unlike with Zoids where they are actually controlling them, they actually become the robots instead. Well, this is another... It's another 80s cartoon. I know what you mean, because I've just recently got hold of a copy of it. Um, I think it is... Is it not Robotech? It's not Robotech. Robotech's the one with... Robotics. Robotics. Okay. I've got the theme tune in my head. Yeah, they meet this race, and they sort of... Yeah, they they go inside them type there of thing. There were toys of those as well, weren't there? Yeah. Um, I forget who did that. I think it was Matchbox. Right. Yeah. But they were like Zoids as well, weren't they? It was like similar sort of concept. Very similar jobbies, concept. Yeah. yeah. But um, I'd like to see Wurzel Gummidge revamped. Yeah? Fuck off. What, <laughs> what with that like right weird off. character Daft Head? I think it, it'd have to be The Adventures of Daft Head. Yeah. Yeah. You could reboot uh, Wurzel Gummidge and it could be The Adventures of Daft Punk and I'd be all right about that. Well, they've got different heads, haven't they? Yeah. I think it would probably do quite well. No, I days. think people would be like, what the fuck is this weird shit? And not yeah, but it. people quite like weird shit. If you went really dark with it. Yeah, but it's really, really dark and really like weird. Like Chris Morris dark. Yeah. That could be quite interesting. I'd like to see a one-off at least. Just yeah. A, yeah. Um, Who does Black Mirror? Charlie Brooker. Charlie Brooker, Brooker if you're listening. <laughs> Charlie yeah. Brooker, if you're listening, which is definitely not, just fuck off with the words of gummage, right? <laughs> yeah. Please. Just send that now. Just, just, just one episode, Charlie. Just one. Make sure any scare crazy in. Just make sure you feature lots of Daft Dead for Ross. Cause he, yeah. So what other programme? I mean, I'm, we listed a few earlier that we watched as kids, but would they work today? So like, like Grain Chill I'll tell you what wouldn't work. JC and the Wheel Warriors. I mean, who the fuck thinks it's a good idea for there to be plant cars? I think it's an interesting see, concept. I'd I like to see a, a concept. If that was handled well, It's like right. Fast and Furious meets Day of the Triffids. Yep. Yeah, that's 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 great. That sounds great to me. It's just weird enough to work. I yeah. loved that cartoon. I really it's did. Really I've bad. got the whole of it on my hard drive. It's actually. great. Uh, the entire season. Yeah, I tried to watch my, make my missus watch it recently. She yeah, because she's not an she idiot. Wouldn't. Mate. <laughs> Saw boss. Saw boss. Yeah. yeah. And T bot was it the little robot? I think it was T bot. Or is he the one from Ulysses? Yeah, Ulysses T bot. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They, they did they have similar a very similar character. sort of I yeah yeah and. Art style. Oh, I'll tell you what you could reboot and it would be better than it was when it was out uh, back in the day. Disney's The Black Hole. Yeah, that's a good one. In actual fact, that's been spoken about. That would actually, yeah. Because that falls into the same category as Dune. Right. Doesn't it? No, it's not as serious as Dune, though, is it? No, but I mean, it's like the they've made something and it was it, it sort of missed the mark. Right, I see what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it wasn't greatly. Uh, Christopher Lee, wasn't it? Don't know, can't remember. If I remember rightly. But I think just remember the two robots. Wasn't just Black Hole another one that was riding the Star Wars wave? And wouldn't it be doing that again today? Probably. There is talk of a remake. So, yeah, perhaps it'll happen. So maybe it'll miss the mark again. Well. Maybe maybe Star Wars hits all those buttons. Even more so now, because that's, that's the brand people want. Do you mean like what Lost in Space missed the mark? Yeah, totally. That was terrible. Oh, yeah, yeah shit. Tell you what's good now. Go on. I'm better than it ever been. Star Trek. Yeah, I'm looking and forward I'll to the new season. For that. No, I mean the films. Oh, okay. Ooh, uh, I don't. I'm not, not really getting on with them. I've not finished the second, third one yet. Sorry. I've I enjoyed the first one. Um, I've just got nothing to draw me into watch any more of them. I quite in, I enjoyed the second one better than I did yeah. the first actually because it's not uh, the writer. It's the the guy who does, um, the guy who's basically responsible for the end of the Mummy, is the guy uh, the guy that wrote um, the first Star Trek movie, and he, the same without spoiling anything, the same thing happens at the end of the movie where, and it's something that people complain about. It's a shit horrible MacGuffin to keep right. the things rolling, and yeah. Um, oh bullshit! What? Just bull? Just bullshit? Bullshit. Yeah. yeah, was it a, a, a sonic screwdriver job? Yeah, yeah, yeah. sort of. Yeah, yeah, basically. Brilliant. Um, but yeah, so I don't know if I like the new movies or not. 
The second one is much better with Khan. Although it's not Khan. Spoiler alert. No, uh, Echo is bad. The second one's really bad. Is it? No, it's uh, not really bad. It's just the worst one of all. F- I, d- I enjoyed it, one. but... But the first one and the third one are really good. Okay, I need to finish the third one. But I am very much looking forward to the Netflix series coming at the end of this year. I'll give it a go. Yeah, I, 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 it's not Netflix, but I know what you mean. Well, it's being sh- shown over here, I think, on Netflix. Really? I think it's getting a Netflix release here, yeah. Because we've got no distribution for it in the UK, I don't think. Skyland Tech. <laughs> so, anything else we'd like to see like revamped? Oh, st- Paul, again, stuff we don't want to see ha- revamped. Would you be interested in a complete Transformers reboot? I would, um, if they did it off the IDW continuity that they've got at the minute. But they'd have to do it right. That's the only, again. That's the only way they define they've right. Because um, they're talking about doing the Bumblebee movie based on the 1980s concepts designs mm. like uh yeah the car designs and things so i don't i wouldn't i'd want to see it animated yeah yeah i think that just suits that genre much better i'd want to see it animated i want to see the art style in the same yeah, as but the they're comics making animated are they still making animated transformers they are but it's very much the let me guess it's for children it's for children it's um, i'm shocked yeah i know it's almost like they're trying to sell toys. I know. It? How dare they? I think as much as you have got infinite knowledge in your brain about Transformers, you're slightly going off them. I'm going. You're off. going through the. F- you're going through what I went through with Star Wars. I'm. So and now you don't know whether you like them or hate them. It's more of a case. I know what I like, and I think that's the thing. That's. That's it's that that's what we're talking about here. It's that fine line of am I just being stubborn and I just want what I had in the past and I don't want anything else, or is it just this new thing is shit, and what I had originally I'm right it's it's better and I think that's what's blending over with the whole argument with Doctor Who and all those things. People get wrapped up in this and they get lost in a particular element of this this world and as soon as anybody sort of threatens to change any of that their little safety net then they go ape shit get off it and i think with transformers for me it's this it's become so it's become a massive merchandise that which is it, it, it really it was originally but it was it's become so diluted for me there's so many different continuities of it and i don't really connect with any of them and i don't know if that's because of my age or where i am that's the thing, though. With several different versions, you should be able to connect with one of them. It's quite sad, isn't it? Mm. To be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Hate being old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> I don't know if they still do. But back in the day, they used to have different Spider-Man comics with different sort of age ranges, didn't they? Not right. so much age ranges, but like Spectacular Spider-Man, the stories were darker and there was more dialogue on the page and stuff. Okay. Uh, well, as opposed to Amazing Spider-Man. Right. Like Harry, n- Harry Osborn dying but rescuing. The Parkers is was a spectacular Spider Man storyline. Right, okay. But I don't know if they still do that with comics. Do they do that with comics? Don't know. I'm, I'm aware of, but. Don't, don't read comics because I'm nearly 40. <laughs> oh, I'll never stop reading. Um, was it Jonathan Ross? He's a massive comic head, isn't he? He loves his comics. The only comics I ever look at when I'm in the newsagents is, uh, are the ones that are s- stacked with like White Dwarf and Total Film and things like that. So. I've not looked at the kids' section. Maybe I will next time, just out of interest. Mm. Go and hang around the kids' section, you know. <laughs> well, yeah. I just don't really care so much anymore. I used to be really angry about things. Like I was really angry about the prequels. Right. What the Star Wars I was prequels? I really angry about the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Yeah, but that's terrible. That's a very bad movie, though. Very, very bad movie. There's no excuses for that. But I think that's that's what you've just struck. I've got the Blu-ray set of Indiana Jones, and I threw the Kingdom of Crystal Skull away. Really? Out of it, yeah. Wow. You struck a point there. Uh, the older you get, the more tolerant um, you get, and the more sort of settled you are in your own skin. So nothing's going to take away what you had in '88 or '96 or whatever. That thing you loved is still there on DVD or Blu-ray it's, or whatever. It's it's still there. You ain't going to take them. You still got those fond memories, and you can go back and reminisce over that. This new film from 2016 that all the kids are going watching that's meant to be the same thing is absolute shit. 
it's not the end of your world. You've got this far and you're this old, and it's not. But I think it that is is it's generally people who the people that go ape shit. I think are the people that it's it's a bit sad to say, but if this is all they've got, they don't want to change that. That that is their life. This is their whole important thing. It's 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 modern technology falling on the floor. You wouldn't get that with a Bakelite phone, would you? Wouldn't, would you? No. Fucking hell, Bakelite phone had gone through the floor. <laughs> right it's it, somewhere yeah. in the foundations. <laughs> um, yeah, I just think people need to go outside more and get lives. Yeah. And not care so much. Yeah. Be ambivalent and indifferent and like things that you like. But if it's but shit, tell the fuck off. things that you don't like, just... just don't like them and put them away. Just get on with your life. Yeah. Yeah. Let people enjoy things. Yeah, get off it. Yeah. Oh, I'll tell you one thing that's better than it's ever been, and it just keeps getting better because it's a really young industry, video games. <laughs> this is true. Actually, that's one thing from our childhood that they had a go at making a movie of and screwed it up, but people still quite like it. And I'd, I'd like them to have another go, I think, at Super What's Mario Brothers. Oh, right. I thought you were going to say Tron. I thought ben I quite liked the first oh, that's one. That's so bad, that film, isn't it? What, the Tron, second I quite one? I like the first one. No, the Super Mario Brothers. Oh, Super, Super Mario Brothers yeah, was yeah. F- fucking horrible. It was, yeah, very, very mistakenly put together film, wasn't it? They missed the mark completely. Apparently, the actors were turning up drunk every day. Oh, wouldn't surprise me. You'd have to be to do that, wouldn't you? <laughs> uh, who was it? Bob Hoskins. Bob Hoskins, yeah. Um, who played Cooper? Dennis uh, Hopper. Dennis, Dennis Hopper. Hopper. Jeez, they got two. Qu- well, Hopper's brilliant. Huge actors. Both dead. Yeah. Yeah. Both dead. So, but still, I think another another go at Super Mario would, would be all right, wouldn't it? I think it would be absolutely pointless. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't like the idea of it. It's all a bit trippy, isn't it? I don't think it's that. I think the, it doesn't translate well into film. I think certain concepts just don't translate well. Is the cartoon bad? From the, the cartoon, from our childhood, pretty bad. I remember I had very fond memories of it, and you watch yeah, it again now, and you think, "Ooh, that's oh, painful." I've got it's VHS really bad, of it. It's okay. Really badly animated yeah. as well, isn't it? You've got a VHS of it. Yeah, the mm-hmm. Muppet Babies was brilliant stuff. I fucking isn't it? love Muppet Babies. <laughs> that's yeah. really clever. Such a good program. They did yeah, loads of t- um, Tiny Toons, Muppet Babies, and the Animaniacs. They can bring the, all of them back. Yeah, yeah, cool. And uh, Ducktales. Oh, no, they they've done that actually, haven't they? They've done a reboot of Ducktales. Have they? Yeah, they have. Oh, it's being that. shown on Nickelodeon and right about now, I think. What about Dog Tanyon? Would you want to see that mm, live action? Yeah. Where well, they do make that show live Weird. action all the time because it's just the Three oh, Musketeers and Dogs vs <laughs> Cats. Yeah, no, it's just that story gets. It's one of those things like Peter Pan. Yeah. Like now Peter Pan, they reboot every five yeah, minutes, yeah. don't they? Yeah. Dog Talion and Phineas Fogg. Maybe they should be left alone. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Anything where you've got like an animal as a main like character who's already an anthropomorphized that's the wrong way to say I that know word, what you mean. character from another from another book, from another creation. So Phileas Fogg being a lion, it's not going to work as a movie, is no. it? And Dog Tanyon being a dog, Batfink, for instance, yeah, they're not going to work. But you know, some more some more cartoons like that for our kids. But Great. going back to what Ross said about computer games, he said they just keep getting better and better and better. Are there any games from the past, eight bit, sixteen bit, oh, d- oh, that you wouldn't you want, want them to touch? That no. you think if they did them now, it wouldn't work? Because I can think of at least, well, at least one. What no, do you mean? but I can think of ones that I want them to make new versions of speedball straight away yeah give speedball me a two yeah give me speedball but fifa okay yeah. that would be yeah. cool um i recently played bionic commando that was pretty poor what the new 3d one mm. yeah that is really bad but they also remade bionic commando the side Did they? scroller and that's really good that's the good thing with video games now is there was a st- we were going through a stage where um everything had to be 3d no, where um, gameplay was secondary to like look and narrative and, yeah. and yeah, yeah, true. bombastic, and now we've got we've got this perfect um, like we've got these huge AAA movie like games, and then we've got all these indie games that are just pure gameplay like from twenty years ago. Well, yeah, I yeah. think that's maybe where we are with movies at the moment. We're at that point where it's everything that was intrinsically good about the original story 
is getting lost because they want to try and modernise it, g- give it all the modern hits and give it all that m- new twist, and it's still not, and they're missing that whole point of what made it intrinsically good to start off with. And maybe c- computer games have already hit that point. There's a great m- computer game from 20 years ago that you could make a really good animated movie of, though. Abe's Odyssey. Yeah, that's highly, yeah, really I'd well regarded, isn't it? Yeah. That would be amazing. Oh, there's another one for you. Little Big Planet. No, Little another Big World. Adventure. Little Big Adventure. I I want, I'd like a new version of that, please. Which one's Little Big Adventure? It's you're this little guy and it's isometric. It's m- fuck. It's the most French game ever, but you're called Twinson and you live on the planet of Twinson. And it's just really good. Okay. But I used to play it with the music turned down, listening to Exit Planet Dust on repeat. <laughs> ah, cool. So I've... G- uh, I've Chemical Brothers. If I put Exit Planet Dust on in my mind, I just can see levels of um, little big, little big adventure. Do you know why it's called Exit Planet Dust? Nope, because they used to be called the Dust Brothers, and somebody else turned up with the same name. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's a really good album, that amazing album. One of the one of the greats. It's a good, one. I've not heard anything from the Chemical Brothers for a long time, actually. They oh. um they went actually. through a stage where they sounded really just quite mundane housey but i've got s- probably about eight albums on my see that's where orbital have gone for me yeah yeah they were really good first two three albums were fantastic and then and back to doctor who yeah <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah okay any other properties that they've had a go at that you'd like to well see them try again by any chance i'm thinking about properties that going back we said again computer games that have been really successful and they've turned into film franchises and they were dreadful right As right that's every video game ever well i was gonna say yeah but is there any you think they could that they could make work you they are doing a reboot of tomb raider aren't they with yeah that's um, true pretty lady from ex machina yep what's her name don't look it up yes you would you like to see a metal gear yes I Live part action. of me would love to see a Metal Gear. I think Gear that would Solid, really work. But also I like how fucking mental Metal Gear Solid is. Yeah, but if they kept with that and they made it fifteens, eighteens. The thing is all you need is like the opening section of Captain America Winter Soldier. Boom. Anything that feels like that. That's a Metal Gear movie, isn't it? There and there. Yeah, right, or any right there. or the James Bond bits where he's doing a bit of sneaking at yeah. the start and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And in that respect, I suppose um, as a movie, you might get away with Splinter Cell might work. I've just well. thought, is it is it just coincidence that it's the same name, but Escape from New York? Is that the same yeah, Snake, Snake Plissken? No, it's c- coincidence. It's no, it's, it's inspired deliberate, by. But it's not. Yeah, it's inspired by. It's like how everybody looks like David Bowie as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just because white, he's a massive fan, Jap- isn't he? Yeah, but also Japanese people just see white people as, as like very David Bowie. like. Um, <laughs> Like not gender neutral, but androgynous. Like androgynous. That's the word I was looking for. Yes. Mm. So we all look like David Bowie to them. A thin yeah. Wh- thin white duke phase. I think. Mm. Yeah. But if you look, at Chris, Google it when you get time and go. Why does everybody in Metal Gear Solid look like David Bowie? And there'll just be screenshot after screenshot after screenshot, and you're like, "Fuck! Everybody looks like <laughs> David Bowie." <laughs> <laughs> cool. Okay. Anything we've missed. Uh, oh, undoubtedly. The guy who made Sensible Soccer, which is the greatest football game ever, ever made, is making a new version of it called Sociable Soccer. Oh, yeah. And it's going to be completely like, uh, the whole point is that you make a team. Right. And then everybody's teams are in it. Okay. But it's going to play very much like... Um, the original Sensible Soccer. Yeah. Cool. That'd be all right, wouldn't it? Yeah. You know what I'd love to see, actually thinking about it day of the triffids and war of the worlds as like a period drama yeah they pr- do war of the worlds but based on that art style from the yeah. musical steampunk era of movies Fuck off. That's just <laughs> vi- no that's not steampunk that's hard sci-fi yeah. and victorian london well there you go two separate things <laughs> but again they're two absolutely just set in stone brilliant stories they are and that i think that's you can't go wrong. Well, you can go wrong with that, but fingers crossed they wouldn't. David the Triffids, actually, the writer John Wyndham, a few of his stories would, would make very good films yeah. now. Chocky, for instance. Yeah. That's a great one. And The Midwich Cuckoos, Village of the Damned. I don't know if you remember it. Vaguely. I've, all those names ring a bell. Yeah. yeah. See, I think Sapphire and Steel. I know that you were like, what? Again, oh yeah, but I've I know, mentioned yeah. it before, but I think 
give that another chance, honestly. But if if that if they cross that over with Doctor Who, that would really work. I think they it's should. implied that they are some sort of time lords. All right, okay. Yeah, cool. I'd love to see that, but again, it'd have to be handled really well. Personally, I'm really looking forward to Dune, The Dark Crystal, and the Labyrinth sequel, wh- whenever they should appear. Oh, and uh, Blade Runner as well, just for examples. But this said, I think we have actually drifted pretty far off topic here. We're, s- we're supposed to be discussing stuff that's been changed from our childhood and somehow we've started talking about stuff that we want from our childhood. So I tell you what, guys, I'll just throw this out there. We're going to treat this as Are They Ruining Our Childhood Part 1? And we'll pick this up another time, I reckon. Right. Unless there's anything else you guys want to add, let's wrap this one up. If there are any properties that you remember from your childhood or there's anything you think we've missed, if you want to discuss any of those with us, drop us an email perhaps. It's new with the crew at gmail.com or leave a message anyway that you find our podcasts. And yeah, we'll please give us some feedback because otherwise we'll just sit here and be like, well, we don't really get bothered by things anymore. Apart from Adam, who's a little bit younger than us, so he gets worried about things on the internet. So, yes, Paul, where can we find you? Oh, the usual places. Um, both the shops, Curiosity and um, Rocket Punch Collectibles. Fair enough. Where can we find you, Ross? Find me on PlayStation Network, Roscoe Baby. Two S's. His handle, me. his handle is linked below. So yeah. And uh, yeah, come play Battlefield. Shoot him with a tank. Don't shoot me with a tank. Definitely. Because I will blow tank. your tank up. Because that's <laughs> the one thing I'm quite good at on that Ooh. game. Tank killer, eh? Def- tank, that's a challenge. Tank. That's what I play. That's the class I play. It's cool. A definite challenge. Game with a tank. Excellent. Game okay. with a tank. Game on. Yeah. Right, and me. You can find me editing this podcast and hanging about on the Snoop with the Crew Facebook page. So go and find anything that we need to link linked there. And yeah, drop us a message if you want to you know, mention anything that we've spoken about. Thanks very much for listening and we will catch you next time. Say goodbye, guys. See you later. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs>